Now let's have a look at uh, compound commands for structured programming. How can you do uh, conditional branches, for loops, while loops? How can you uh, group uh, lists of uh, commands together when you write uh, shell scripts or sometimes also just on the command line in interactive use? Um, we've already seen that you can combine several commands uh, to a pipeline using the vertical bar um, to feed the output of one command into the standard input of the next. And we've also seen that you can uh, concatenate several of these pipelines with semicolon for sequential execution with a ampersand follow each command with an ampersand for parallel uh, execution in the background or that you have this basic form of conditional execution with the double and or the uh, the double or um, symbol here. And <clears throat> each of uh, these lists of pipelines separated by these we will in the following refer to as the uh, as a list in, in a grammar sense. This is a, a non-terminal symbol here. And <clears throat> if you execute such a list, then the return value that you get back from the entire list is the last command that's being executed inside uh, this list um, as, a, as a foreground command. And you can group such lists together in two ways. You can put round parentheses around the list and then the list will be executed in a subshell. So a separate process of the shell will be invoked and then you have any state change that you make. For example, if you set any shell variables inside here, this will not affect anything outside because this is really as if you had invoked the list in, in a separate uh, shell and the shell forgets everything that happened afterwards. If you just want to group things together to provide uh, to override operator priorities, uh, but you don't want to uh, execute an entire subshell, you can use curly braces for that purpose. I've shown you earlier this web browser example where I had multiple commands and then I did a redirect for uh, one of the file descriptors for all of these commands together. I grouped them together with the curly braces and afterwards I did the uh, redirect. <clears throat> One syntactic curiosity, the list must be terminated with a semicolon inside the, uh, the curly braces but not in the round parentheses. If you ever find out why this difference, please let me know because I still haven't understood it. Uh, a for loop uh, is the word keyword for then the name of a variable, then the keyword in, and then a list of words just separated by spaces, just like command line arguments. Uh, the usual expansions, uh, path expansions and so on will be applied to uh, this list of words. Then a semicolon to indicate the end of the list of words, then the keyword do, then a list of commands that you want to repeat, terminated by a semicolon, uh, followed by the keyword done. And <clears throat> then what the for loop does is it expands the words just like command line arguments and then uh, one of the resulting words at a time will be assigned to this shell variable here. And this shell variable is then set while the list executes for each word. So simple example, <clears throat> we have a directory that contains a number of files with the extension .text and for each .text file we want to make a backup copy. And the backup copy shall have the additional uh, extension .back. So we write for f in star .text. This will be expanded by the shell with path expansion to a list of all files that end in .text. Uh, call the copy command and copy the file name, each of these file names here into the same file name with dot back uh, appended and then semicolon done marks the end of the loop. Um, similarly, there's an 
if then uh, command. So if a list is executed and then the success of the last command in the list determines uh, success means true, uh, then this list here will be executed. If we get a non-zero value back, this means false or not successful, then we go into the else branch. There may be, instead of an else, there may be an l if, then we have another condition. So to avoid that uh, the ifs get nested too deep, rather than writing else and then starting a new if, you can just continue with l if and have the uh, next check, uh, uh, which again has an end and then towards the end you can have an else if all the ifs and l ifs did not return true, then the else branch is executed. And of course the elif and the else branches are optional. And you terminate a if statements with phi. This is just if spelled backwards. This is a uh, convention that comes from the Algol programming language. And Steve Bourne was a known fan of the Algol programming language and took over this convention. Uh, very similar, there is uh, a while loop while this list is successful, execute this other list or until uh, while this uh, list here is not successful. So until the list is successful, um, execute uh, this list. The semicolons in all of these examples is a alternative to a line feed character. So instead of the semicolon, you can also just uh, start a new line. The parser knows at this state that the command hasn't ended yet. So if you want to uh, stretch these commands over several lines, as I've done, for example, at this uh, position, just replace the semicolon uh, with a new line. In other commands, if you want to run a command over several lines, and there isn't a semicolon here that you could replace that way, then uh, you can end the line with a backslash character that basically tells the shell uh, the line isn't finished here. You kind of escape the line feed that's coming such that it will be ignored by the shell and the shell will continue reading the same command line in the next line. There's also a uh, case statement which does sort of the equivalent of a calculated uh, jump. It also has a built-in pattern uh, matching mechanism. So case is followed by a single word that undergoes all the usual uh, expansion rules. For example, here I've written case dollar $command. Here we access the, uh, the value of the variable command. And because the value of the variable command may contain a, a space character to make sure that this is then not split into two uh, words, at the um, at that space character as a safety measure, I put double quotation marks around it. Uh, in case the word is in, and if the word here after all the expansion matches one of these patterns here, so there's a vertical pipe separated list of patterns terminated by round parentheses, then execute this list until you encounter a double semicolon and then this repeats. There can be more patterns and a list and a double semicolon and so on. And Isaac again terminates the entire thing. Isaac is just case spelled backwards. Similarly, uh, a convention copied from Algol. Um, so um, this matches the word against one pattern at a time and the uh, first time one of these uh, pattern matches the corresponding list is executed and then we jump to the end of the case statement. So a very typical example from a shell script that has several built-in commands. A shell script that, for example, as the first um, command line argument receives a verb as a command and we now want to, for example, uh, start a server if command equals start then we start the application server in the background. Um, the process ID here is now available in a special shell variable dollar exclamation mark. So we save the process ID 
in this shell variable process ID. And then if later we get another uh, stop command, then we send the kill command to this uh, process ID. We, if this is over several invocations, we probably want to save the process ID persistently in a file in the meantime. And here you can also see one of these patterns. The patterns are the same as in path expansion. So you have question mark for an arbitrary character or star for an uh, zero or more arbitrary characters. And if you want to have an, an, an otherwise uh, statement down here, just write star as a catch all, uh, for example, to output a error message that the command wasn't actually known because it wasn't in the list of supported commands here. Um, I mentioned already that the first list in the if, while, and until commands is interpreted as a Boolean condition using the reverse logic uh, used in the shell. So true uh, is if the command returns uh, zero and false is if the command uh, returns one. And there exists a built-in command test that allows you to perform a number of tests, for example, whether a file exists or whether a path name is a directory or whether a file is readable, writable, executable, whether uh, two strings are identical, not identical, or uh, are relative to each other in some uh, sorting order. And the, the syntax following the test um, uses this option-like uh, syntax. So if you write test minus e file name, then the test command will return zero if the file actually exists. And here with minus d, it will um, return if it exists and is a directory and so on. And there is there are lots more of these options. You have a minus a, for example, is then a logical and or minus o is a is a logical or and you have a string comparison and numerical comparison and so on. So read the man page for the test command. And because the test command is uh, used quite often, but the word test is uh, typographically a little bit clumsy if you write if test. Um, early versions of Unix also had a, a synonym for test. The test command was also available as just the file name open uh, square bracket. Today test is built in, but the shells as an alternative to test expression also accept open square bracket expression closed square bracket. And that notation is what you normally see. <clears throat> so a couple of very simple examples of applying these uh, compound commands is if, and here we call the uh, built in test command, if in the home directory, uh, invisible file called dot r hosts exists, then we pipe uh, the warning message found tilde slash dot r host into the mail command. We send an email to log name with a subject line. Is there a hacker backdoor? Because the r hosts command, uh, if present, uh, can be used to trust certain other, other hosts to allow uh, users of the same name uh, to log in. But if the other host is not trustworthy, then this obviously can be a security hole. So the old R login or the more modern SSH command have accepted versions of this command. And this is a little, um, for a security conscious user, a little test that you may want to check in a as a tripwire in one of the shell startup scripts. Here you can also see this here, the middle two lines are a single pipe. And in order to allow the pipe to extend over two lines, you have to escape the line feed at the end of the first line with a backslash character. And another example, this is again something you may put into one of the startup files. Uh, if the command host name, which is called here in command expansion with the spec ticks, um, equals one particular host name, uh, then uh, execute the two commands, uh, sleep for 10 seconds, then play some greeting sound in a subshell 
in the background. So we put it in a subshell such that we can put this entire list and not just an, a single command into the background. Uh, on other machines, use the X message command, which opens a little notification window and give a visual greeting rather than an acoustic greeting. Uh, and finally, here an example, um, if the architecture command, uh, either the architecture command does return something other than IX86, or we clear the screen and greet the user with the inside I'm a PC. And finally, like in uh, most programming languages, you also want to have macros or functions to be able to give names to commonly recurring sequences of other commands. And there's actually two mechanisms in the shell. The first one is a very simple one called alias. It just allows you to define a new command that can appear at the start of a command line. And uh, that will be just textually replaced with another string. So for example, I very frequently use the command ls minus la, give me the list of files uh, in expanded in long format, and I want to see all files, including the invisible ones. And in the olden days on MS-DOS, I was used to just have the command dir show directory available to do the same. So I've defined myself with alias dir equals ls minus la, this as an alias. Whenever I type dir, that command actually gets executed. But this is really just a textual substitution. You can't really receive any parameters, do any manipulation to command line arguments or similar here. If you want to do this, then you should instead use shell functions. They are defined by first providing a name of the function and then following the name of the function just with open and closed parentheses. This looks a little bit like the function definition or invocation in other programming languages, but this isn't actually a list of parameters and parentheses. This is literally just an opening and a closing parenthesis to indicate as a keyword that this here is a function definition. And then uh, grouped in curly braces, um, you provide a list of commands that now shall be called under that function name. So I can remove the alias dir and I can alternatively define dir as a function. And then I write ls minus la. And these functions do receive command line arguments. So you write function and then without parenthesis, you just call them like any other command uh, with a sequence of words. And these sequence of words will then be available inside the body of the function as variables $1, $2, $3 for the first, second, third command line argument, or $star gives you all the command line arguments, or $number sign gives you the number of command line arguments. So here, for example, uh, I can put all the command line arguments of the dear command. I can insert at this location into the uh, command line that I call instead. These same variables $1, $2, $3, if you use them outside the body of a function definition, then they can be used in a shell script to access the command line arguments passed to the entire shell script.